Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. At long last, it's been announced. It was uh, unveiled during the Star Wars Celebration event. And so far, things are looking pretty good. The trailer that was shown was pure cinematic. No gameplay, which is kind of disappointing, but the concept of it really does look like something worth exploring. So the setup essentially revolves around this character named Cal Kestis, who's played by Cameron Monaghan. Cal is a Padawan who survived Order 66, which is Palpatine's order to execute all the Jedi to hunt them down. And so, of course, Cal is being hunted down by the Empire. He's on the run. The story starts with him working as a salvager in a planet called Bracca. He's sort of settling down and hiding. But then at one point in the trailer, you do see like one of the co-workers, he's falling down. And Cal has to decide whether he uses the Force or not to save him. If he doesn't use the Force, he'll fall and die. But if he does use it, it means he'll have to run again. People will find out he's a Jedi. So a lot of conundrums like that will probably come at play in this story. He probably does end up using the Force, saving the guy, and so he has to run again. Throughout the trailer, we see him being chased by these enemies called Purge Troopers, who are apparently specifically trained to hunt down Jedi as part of Order 66. And they have a pretty cool design, and I'm looking forward to seeing how combat against them will be like. But we'll have to wait to find out. Zero gameplay shown thus far. We can probably glean at gameplay elements here and there looking at the cinematic trailer, but nothing tangible. And me personally, until I see more of the game itself, I'm not going to get too excited. I think it's respawn. I think it's got a lot of potential to be good, but cinematic trailers just don't do it for me. I wish companies honestly stopped doing cinematic trailer reveals without gameplay to accompany it, but I'm sure we'll see more of the game at E3. What we do know about the gameplay itself is that Vince Zampella said during the Star Wars Celebration panel that the combat system is meant to be easy to pick up, but there's a lot of depth to it, and that it will be very thoughtful, whatever that means. Vince also added that players will have to use all of their abilities, moves, and powers to succeed. So based on everything he said, I'm getting the vibe that this is less Bayonetta and maybe more like Batman Arkham games where it's actually really easy to get into, but you have to kind of like look around and press buttons very deliberately. You have to know when to block, when to attack. You have to look out what enemies to use certain powers against, so on and so forth. Now what's really got people excited about this is that it's actually a single player story driven experience. It's got no multiplayer, no microtransactions. It is not a live service game. Vin Zampella told us as much before the game's unveiling and that was met with very loud cheers during the celebration event. I've said this before, but I think it's just so sad that we live in a time in which not implementing shitty schemes and AAA games is so rare that a game not including microtransactions and stuff like that can make headlines and make us feel so excited. We get hyped about the fact that we will not get swindled and ripped off and what have you. But hey, good news is good news. Now it's not just Respawn the developers who have been touting the lack of monetization. EA is also going in there and saying, hey guys, no microtransactions, yeah. The company took to Twitter to market the fact that Jedi Fallen in order will be this pure game. They said this, no microtransactions, no loot boxes, and no, we won't be adding them. A single player Star Wars story for those of you who are ready to become a Jedi. Now, a lot of people are skeptical about whether they're not going to have microtransactions at launch and then release microtransactions later at a future date, as many games and companies have done. But I would like to think that the implication with, and no, we won't be adding them, is that the game will always be a non-life service, linear single player experience with a beginning and an end with no bullshit attached. Stuff like this sounds good when developers like Respawn say it, but when the publisher who is responsible for exploiting and continuing to exploit things like microtransactions and loot boxes, when they say stuff like this, when they're like, yeah, I'm on the right side, it really just irks me. After all, EA was a key player in the normalization of things like microtransactions, loot boxes, and this focus on live services in the AAA landscape. And you may recall it was EA itself who touted how gamers are no longer interested in linear single player experiences. But now all of a sudden they want to pretend like they're on the right side of the fence. They really want to play it off like they're the good guys after having been the bad guys for so many years, after they continue to implement loot boxes in games like FIFA and Apex Legends. They've got a lot of nerve coming out with a tweet like this expecting gratitude. For my part, the best they get is a thank God rather than a thank you. The funny thing about all this is that 
with EA tweeting all these things, they're basically admitting that they know microtransactions and loot boxes are bad, that people hate this stuff. After all, they're using the absence of microtransactions and loot boxes as a positive part of their marketing campaign, which really goes to show that they're adding stuff like monetization, knowing that they mar the integrity of a game. But of course, with titles that are live services, they will be absolutely vague and silent about monetization. And when once in a blue moon, there is an EA game that doesn't employ microtransactions, they'll use that as if it were this positive thing that they are all on board for. Something I discussed in my last video was how little sense it makes for EA to be launching a non-live service Star Wars game. They've been pushing for live services for all these years. They're all about that long-term monetization. And with even Bioware, Dragon Age 4, development for that game had to be rebooted in part because it wasn't a live service. Then we have Visceral's ragtag Star Wars project, which was frowned upon because it was basically going to be this uncharted single-player story-driven Star Wars game and that was something that EA didn't like. They asked Visceral, when are you gonna make us a game that's gonna make billions of dollars like FIFA does? And that was in part why Visceral was kind of uh, just shut down, why the Star Wars game they were making was canceled and pivoted to be a live service experience now being handled by EA Vancouver. So the question is, what makes Jedi Fallen Order so special? Why is EA giving Respawn a sort of pass in making a non-life service game when other companies within EA's umbrella haven't gotten that luxury. Turns out I'm not the only one who's confused. Amy Hennig, who you may know as the creative director of the Uncharted series and the developer for Ragtag before that project was canceled, she was also surprised by all this. In an interview with Eurogamer, here's what she had to say. It's odd, I have to be candid with you. I mean, it's coming from the EA Star Wars Twitter handle, so it's certainly part of the plan, but I don't know whether it's implicitly referencing previous comments they made after our project was killed. There is so much change in this industry all the time. Over the course of my time at EA, we were back and forth on what the overall publishing corporation wanted. Everybody's trying to figure out what the right path is. I also think Respawn's game has the benefit of being largely developed before they were acquired. It is is a protected entity and Vince Zampella makes very sure because he's part of the executive team at EA he can protect the interests of Respawn. This is all speculation on my part. I don't know why the change of heart happened because that was very clearly not an acceptable plan when we were working on Ragtag. But you know, things change. The decision to cancel Ragtag was made in summer of 2017. We found out in October 2017. So that's almost two years ago and a lot has changed in that time. And there's been a pretty public and vocal backlash against the idea gamers don't want single player finite games without all these extra modes. Of course they do, of course we do. So maybe this is just the demonstration of a change of strategy for EA. And you've got to understand there's been huge changes in management there since all of this has happened as well. Both Patrick Soderlund and Jade Raymond have left in the meantime, and Laura Meal, who was the franchise general manager for Star Wars when I joined, is now in Patrick's role. So I don't have any insider knowledge, but there is a lot of reasons they could have adopted a new attitude for this. And I'm glad for Respawn's sake, because I'm excited about their game, and I've heard great things about it. In my last video of Jedi Fallen Order, I theorized a couple things. I said maybe there are some special circumstances surrounding Respawn that makes them more immune to their ideas getting axed by EA or having them being shifted to live service and whatnot. Maybe the fact that they were already working on Apex Legends, a live service, made EA more flexible towards them working on a single-player, story-driven, non-live service game in parallel. Or maybe it's the fact that EA's reputation is in the dumpster right now. Maybe the fact the fact that so many of their games lately have been received so poorly made them cave, made them think, okay, maybe it's time to get some good PR and some of that reputation back. I don't know for sure, and Amy doesn't seem to know for sure either, she's only speculating, but as she said, there is certainly a lot that can change in the course of a few years. Whatever the reason, I'm just glad that Respawn is getting the chance to produce a proper story-driven Star Wars game without EA mandates interfering and ruining everything. EA has definitely forgotten that story is a huge part of why fans love Star Wars so much, 
and Respawn hopefully will remind them of that by producing this amazing game that will get a ton of awesome reviews, that will sell really well, and that will just make everyone happy. And a big part of that really is not marring the game's design with monetization bullshit. Respawn gets to celebrate for sure, players get to celebrate, but EA doesn't get to join in on the celebration in my opinion. They were and still are a huge part of the problem with the AAA landscape. You don't get to be the cause of a problem and then act like you're the solution. I'm not gonna thank EA for doing what they should be doing in the first place, which is, first and foremost, prioritizing making fun games. Giving them kudos for this announcement is like thanking a bully for announcing that he won't be taking my lunch money that one day. What we're really feeling is relief from the piece of shit not being a piece of shit this one time, but who knows how things are gonna turn out in the future. I'm not holding out hope that EA has given up on enforcing live service monetization. I'm not gonna keep my fingers crossed that games like Jedi Fallen Order will be a common occurrence. The next Star Wars game that will come out after Jedi Fallen Order, the one that EA Vancouver is working on from the remnants of Visceral's cancel project, that we know will be a live service, and I can only imagine what kinds of shitty monetization we can expect from that game. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. For now, I'm just happy that Respawn has a chance to work on a game that they can really stretch their creative muscles. I hope this game turns out to be amazing. I hope it gets all the praise in the world and I hope everyone can come out winners from this. The consumers, the developers, and yes, even the publisher. After all, if a publisher isn't happy about a game's financial performance, it's probably less likely that they'll pursue that type of game and we don't want that with a game like Jedi Fallen Order. We want to encourage EA to make more games like these, single player, story driven, non-life service, what have you. Anyway, looking forward to what Respawn has in store for us. I hope the gameplay will blow us away at E3. And one thing that keeps me very optimistic is that Jedi Fallen Order has been confirmed to be developed with Unreal Engine 4 rather than Frostbite, which made development for Inquisition hell for the developers and which you know, ruined Andromeda and Anthem. I mean, there were a lot of management problems as well, but the technical issues in large part really kind of got in the way of developers being able to implement certain features and the like. It looks like Respawn won't have that problem with Jedi Fallen Order since they're using Unreal Engine 4, which has a proven track record of being efficient, really good at all kinds of games. So that's a big plus. Hopefully with that, they can focus on not the technical challenges, not be hampered by that, but rather focus on the creative elements, on building the game, rather than on trying to work out how to use the tools to make the game. Anyway, that's all I have to say on the matter. I'd love to hear what your take is on all of this in the comments below. With that, I would like to end this news update and discussion video. Thank you for tuning in. To be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.